Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're gonna to be diving into Lightroom Classic, and I'm gonna be walking you through my top 11 little tips, tricks, and hacks to speed up your workflow like no tomorrow. So without further ado, and without wasting any more time, Let's dive in to Lightroom Classic. All right, so here we are inside of Lightroom, and as you can see, we are in the Develop tab. And the first little tip I wanna run you through is something new that Lightroom's just added in to their 2024 version, which is AI Denoise. So if we come over to the Basic tab here and we scroll all the way down to Detail, you'll see Noise Reduction, and then you'll see this little Denoise button. We're gonna click on that, and then Lightroom's gonna do a little bit of AI magic, right? It's gonna take a little bit of time, and depending on how fast your computer is, it's going to, uh, depend on how fast this process is gonna be. But as you can see just there, it's really cleaned up this image like crazy. This was shot at 6400 ISO on the Canon R5C. But if we just click and hold on this, you can see the before, we let go, you can see the after, and this is insane. We can also increase this to make it a little bit more, less noisy, if you will. More, less noisy, goodness me. Or we can decrease this and all the noise comes back. So somewhere kind of in the middle is where we want to be. We don't wanna go overboard and just make it look really smooth and there's no detail, but we also wanna make sure we kill a bit of that noise, well, a lot of that noise. So we're gonna click there, before, after, you just hit enhance. This part takes just a little bit of time, but in about a minute or so, you're gonna have a really clean image come out of this. This is gonna save a new photo as a new DNG, and now we've got a very clean image shot at 6400 ISO. Thank you AI in Lightroom. So next up on the list, if you use masking at all, here is a little bit of a tip to make sure you're always getting the best masking experience. And if you've seen any of my Lightroom Classic walkthroughs before, you'll know I'm in love with masking. If you open up the masking tab just here, and then if you just, you can create any mask, to be honest, we could just create a radial filter just like this. You can see mine's green. Chances are yours is red. But if you wanna change this, let's say we were, this was a green photo, we shot it in the forest somewhere, and I didn't want it to be green so I could actually see what I was masking out. All you wanna do is come over to this little box here, you can click on this, and there you can change your mask to any color. So let's say we wanted it to be, not blue, so let's say we wanted it to be pink, done, hit enter, and you're good. All right, next up on our list is a tool called Point Color. This one's really interesting. If we come over to the Develop tab and scroll all the way down to Color Mixer, this is our usual hue, saturation, and luminance sliders, but you'll now see up the top here, you can click Point Color. Now this is really interesting. As you can see here on the hue, saturation, luminance slider side of town, we've got reds, oranges, yellows, greens, and so on, right? So Lightroom's just gonna lump every color into at least one of these kind of sections. But if we head over to Point Color, we now get to choose exactly what color we want to adjust. So for example, let's say we wanted to adjust uh, this shade of blue up here. Now I know this is blue or you know we could even go down here into the yellows and orange side of town, but let's say we wanted to use the blue up here. Now sure, this is blue, it's aqua as well, but it might also be somewhere a little bit in between. We wanna come over to point color, make sure that's selected, then pick up this little dropper and now we just click on here. I'm gonna zoom out to make sure we can see the whole image. And now, as you can see over here, we've got our hue, saturation, and luminance sliders back. So this is just affecting this color range up the top here. So now, or if I wanna just play with it up here, I can. Let's say we wanted to make this a little bit more on the purple side of town, a little bit more, you know, darker blue instead of the uh, instead of the tealish kind of vibe we had before. Maybe we wanted to increase the uh, increase the saturation a little bit, decrease the luminance. Okay, things are looking good. And then if we want, we can come down here and then let's select this color. All right, this is a a very actually quite accurate skin tone to be fair, but it's just the rock down here. And now we get to play with these sliders as well. So maybe we wanted to dial up the saturation. Now sure, as you can see, it is gonna affect the little parts that are in this front rock and anything else that also falls under this kind of area here. But now we get to play with just this color range, which is really nice. Maybe we want to, ooh, moving that luminance really does make a difference, huh? Anyway, we're gonna reset that. And let's say we wanted to make this a little bit more on the reds and maybe we just desaturate this a little bit more. And there we go. So now you can actually create your own HSL sliders, which is insane. This is a really, really cool tool, very powerful as well. So if you've got some really unique colors in your shots and you don't really understand where they kind of fall on the HSL tab, then this is the tool for you. Alrighty, next up we've got a tool that has been around for a little while, but is still super underrated, at least in my opinion, because to be honest with you, I don't use it as much as I should, but this is the preset intensity slider. So we've got this photo here, it's already edited, sure. Let's uh, let's add a preset on it. Now this is, by the way, these presets are from my preset pack, my master collection of presets. If you wanna check them out, or if you wanna pick them up for yourself, you can do so by heading to the first link in the description. You can also use this code at checkout 
for a cheeky little discount. Uh, but let's say what we've got here, we've got eight and seven. Okay, these look all right. What have we got here too? Oh, okay, big fan of blues too on this shot. By the way, like I said, it's already been edited, so we're just adding stuff on top now. But as you can see, this little sli slider now comes to life, you know, before it was just grayed out, but now we can actually adjust how much or how little we want that preset to be applied. So let's say if we really wanted to crank this preset up to like 180%, as you can see, in my opinion, maybe it doesn't look ideal here, but if you had a shot where the preset looks a little bit too intense, let's find one that looks a little bit too intense. I'm not sure if this already, okay, this one is definitely too intense for this shot. Okay, we just dial it back a little bit. There we go, dial it back. Maybe we come back down into here. We make these a little bit less red. Boom, just like that, we've edited the shot. And this way we can really control how much of the preset we do or don't want used, which is very ideal, especially when you do add a preset and it might just be a little bit too harsh. Alrighty, our next tool on the list is AI Lens Blur. There's a little bit of a theme here, I guess everything is moving towards AI, but this one, just like the AID noise, is really good. Lightroom is actually killing it in 2024. All right, so if we head back over to our develop tab and we head all the way down to this new part right here, we've got lens blur. Now this works on photos just like this. This is perfect. If I were to use it on a photo like this, for example, very hard to get an idea of what should be blurry because it, everything's far away, so more or less everything should be in focus. But in this photo here, we do have a very clear subject. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and press apply. Now, Lightroom's gonna analyze this and then they're gonna work out what should and what shouldn't be in focus. And then they'll allow me to actually adjust the lens blur in the background and in the foreground. So as you can see just there, things got really hectic. So I can turn this little eye off just like that and then back on, and as you can see, things are very blurry. So this photo was already shot at f2.8 on a full frame sensor, so the background was already quite blurry. So what we might do is we might just dial this back a little bit. In my opinion, this really works well on iPhone photos because on an iPhone, there isn't that much depth, there isn't that much bokeh, lens blur in the background of your shots. So using this on an iPhone image can really make it stand out and actually make it look like it wasn't shot on an iPhone at all. But anyway, we're gonna come here, we're just gonna dial it down just a touch to make it look a little bit more realistic. And then we might just add a, uh, maybe a little bit of a different different bokeh element, if you will, the, the lens blur in the background. Uh, this works best if you've got lights in the background, but here it's fine, you know, you'd be able to change it so it had a whole load of different shapes and, you know, gave it a really punchy, unique look, if you will, but it's not really making much of a difference here. We're also, might just turn boost down. I guess this also controls how hectic your blur is in the back, so we might just wanna dial this down just a little bit. And then if we come back to our eye right here, we can turn it off just like that and back on. And it's very subtle in the background. You can see it mainly in this little spire back here. But like I said, this works perfectly with iPhone photos. And I just wanted to quickly run you through how this works. The best part about this, it's quite easy. It's also very, very automated. Like I said, Lightroom this year with AI is crushing it. So this is a very easy tool to use and the tools are arguably just getting easier and easier as the years progress. But yeah, sometimes you need to play around with things just like we did a little bit. And if you just put it on and it gets way too blurry and things in the foreground and background just look really weird, it's probably not the right shot to use it with. But like I said here, if you've got a clear subject in the foreground or in the background and you want things to be out of focus either in the foreground or the background, this is arguably one of the craziest tools Lightroom has added this year. Now, something you just saw me do was turn off the settings, and this is something else that I just wanna quickly run you through as well. So if we come here, every little uh, kind of area, you could say, has this little eye right there. The tone curve has it, the color mixer has it set, every single tool has this little eye. And what you can do is you can just click and hold, and what that does is it turns all the settings off for that area. Then you release, and it comes back. So as you can see, we're really playing with the colors here. If we turn this off, oh, if we turn it off, then they go away. This is what it looked like before I made all those adjustments. If we put it back on, this is what we're working with. So this is a really, really effective tool to make sure you're not pushing or pulling your sliders too far. Now, while we're on the topic of pushing or pulling our sliders way too far, I'm gonna show you how you can see a very quick before and after of your photo. I use this so frequently when I'm editing inside of Lightroom and all you've gotta do is hit the backslash key and this is gonna show you what it looked like before and then you can see after. And this is a very good way to keep track of how far you've come in your edit. Of course, you wanna be making sure that you're not pushing things way too far, and this way you can just get a rough idea of, look, this is what it looked like when it came out of camera, this is where I'm at, am I happy, am I not, what do I need to change, or am I good to go? 
All right, we're now gonna dive back into the masking side of things because auto masks is the next thing that we're gonna be covering. I can remember a time where Lightroom had no auto masks whatsoever. And now that they do, it's honestly one of the biggest time-saving tools I use on a daily basis. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our masking tab right here. We're gonna hit create a new mask and now we've got auto masks here. So let's say we wanted to select the subject. Of course, Lightroom AI, we get the idea, they're crushing it. Lightroom's now gonna use AI to work out what should be masked and what shouldn't be masked and just like that, it has nailed it. No more going over with a fine tooth comb to understand what should or shouldn't be in the mask and making sure every little hair strand is in or out and then going back over with the eraser, none of that. This just goes so, so well. We're also gonna change the color of this because I really like my green mask overlay. I think it stands out the best. And as you can see here, of course, Lightroom's just nailed it. And now we can go through and we can make any adjustments to our auto mask. Maybe we just increase the uh, exposure just a little bit, maybe the warmth as well, not too much. There we go. And then a little bonus tip for you, something that I always do is I can come in here, I can just click on these three little dots and hit duplicate and invert mask. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna select everything behind or everything that I just wasn't selected before. And now I can change this. And this is a really good way. I'm gonna hit O by the way, another bonus tip for you that turns on and off your overlay, which is very, very handy. So we're gonna leave that off for now. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna drop the temperature a little bit to make sure there's a little bit more contrast and color in our shot. And then I'm also gonna drop the exposure just a touch as well. And this way you don't have to go back over, create a new mask, maybe hit select sky and then paint in this little tower and everything else that was, wasn't was selected before. If you just duplicate and invert it, it makes life so quick. And this is auto masks. As you've seen, it saves a lot of time. Now, just for the moment, we're gonna stay inside of the masking tab and I'm gonna run you through color ranges and luminance ranges. This is something else that saves a load of time. So for example, let's say we wanted to only select this kind of light area coming into our shot, right? So we didn't want anything in this area selected or up here selected. Now, sure, I could come in here. I could just create a radial gradient and go like this. And then all of a sudden I've got to, you know, intersect it with a brush and go through here and there and everywhere. There's an easier way to do it. We're going to delete that. We're going to hit create new mask. We're going to come down to luminance range. We're just going to click here. And this now selects everything that is in that luminance range. Now you can come back up here and now you can adjust it. So if we didn't want it to be as harsh, you can see there's some really harsh lines here. If we don't want it to be as harsh, we can just kind of back this off a little bit, really extend it out. But sure, selecting quite a lot of the sky there, but you never really want harsh lines in your image. And then if we wanted to, we could just increase the exposure a little bit maybe not too much. That does add a nice little amount of contrast right in there. But this is a very powerful tool to make sure that you're just selecting a certain area of your shot. You can also do this with colors as well. So let's say if we only wanted to select this reddish orange part here, as you can see, there's a load of this color in this shot, but we can come in here and we can refine it. So let's dial this all the way back down. And maybe we just wanted to make this, you know, darker or brighter, whatever we wanted to do. I don't want to do that. I'm going to delete that mask. And then the last thing I want to run you through with luminance and color ranges is let's create another mask here and let's do a radial gradient. And let's say we only wanted to select this area, but we only wanted to select the reds in this area. So, you know, we didn't want to select anything over here. Well, now we've got this radial mask right here. We can come into these three dots and we can hit intersect mask with color range, click on a little bit of a color. And then as you can see for a moment there, I thought I'd messed up. It selected everything, but now it's only selecting the certain color that we selected inside the first mask. I know that's a little bit, you know, technical, if you will, some layers start adding up, right? Even I'm struggling to keep up with it. But this is again, a very, very powerful tool to make sure that your masks are on point and you're only selecting the things you actually want to be changing. All right, I promise you, we're now done with all the complicated mask stuff. Let's dive into our crop tool. And if you're looking at my crop tool thinking, Zach, that doesn't look like a crop tool. Well, that is because the overlay is different. So as you can see here, I've kind of got some weird crosses going on. I really like to use this crop tool to make sure that all of my compositions are exactly how I want them to, but I can actually cycle through different compositions by pressing O. So I say different compositions, I mean different crop overlays. So if we just hit O, we can go through all of these different crop overlays. I really like using this one and it's very easy to find the center using this one, which is these crosses right here and that's, kind of highlighted by this little kind of little bump here, this little bump here. If you follow these lines across, you can find the center. And then I also use this one a lot as well. So just cycling through these by pressing O can really bring a whole different perspective on your shot to make sure that your composition makes perfect sense. 
All right, tip number 11. We have powered through these, hopefully not too quick. I do get told on a daily basis that I go way too quick in my videos. So I am working on slowing that down, especially in 2024. So anyway, let's take this shot right here. As you can see, we have got a very, very broad kind of color spectrum in the sky. We go from almost pure white to a somewhat dark blue. Now, chances are, if we exported that, we'd get some very strange color banding in our shot. And a really easy way to avoid this is to come all the way down to detail, I believe it is. Detail, no, not detail just yet. We're gonna keep going down lens, but effects, here we are. We're gonna come down to effects and we're just gonna add a little bit of grain. I could already added a little bit of grain. Chances are I actually got that effect in this shot. So it's kind of the perfect example, but just adding a little bit of grain anywhere between 10 to 20 grain is perfect. Don't worry about the size. Don't worry about the roughness. Just leave that as is. You're not really going to notice this in the export whatsoever. I don't understand how or why this works, but this is a very simple way to make sure you're, there's no color banding or luminance banding in your image whatsoever. So even if we had a really harsh orange kind of look right here, and it was going from orange to blue with a really big luminance shift, you know, from bright to dark, this is just how to make sure that's a bit smoother. It just looks a little bit more natural. It kind of looks how, like, how eyes would see it in real life. So just increasing the grain a little bit, play around with it, maybe do a few test exports if you need, and you should be good to go. And chances are you won't be able to see the color banding inside of Lightroom, but once you export it, because of course, you know, your export is gonna degrade the quality of your photo because you're not exporting a raw image, that's when this gets baked on. So anyway, guys, that is gonna wrap up the top 11 tips, tricks, and tiny little hacks that are gonna speed up your workflow like crazy in 2024. I hope you've been able to learn something. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.